Hello there, it's Juliana and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm sharing how to create a shaker card using the Tim Holtz Vault Watch Gears die set. This video is a little longer than usual, but it is packed with techniques and tips, as well as step-by-step -step details on how to create every element of this card. There's also a little bonus card idea at the end. I know shaker cards can be a little intimidating, but I hope to help you feel more confident in creating one and seeing how easy it can be. I also encourage you to take a look at some of the dies you may already have in your stash that you can use these same techniques with. I also want to share that here and there throughout the video, I accidentally referred to the Distress Craft stock as chipboard. Just to clarify, I did not use any chipboard, I only used the craft stock. As always, I encourage you to use your stash as you follow along with me, but if you are interested in something I used or mentioned in the video, you can find a link to it in the description box below. If you make a purchase using that link, you are supporting me, and I really appreciate that support so very much. Now let's get on with the making. So for this project, I'm gonna be working with the Tim Holtz Vault Watch Gears die set. Papers I'm gonna be using are the Metallic Classics Craft Stock from Tim Holtz. I'm gonna be pretty much using all, all of the colors that are in that pack. And I also have a piece of black craft stock. And the, the nice thing about the craft stock is because it has that metallic finish or the color, is on one side and then when you flip it over there's a craft backing to it. Some of the techniques that I'm going to share uh, will work well with paper that has that same sort of composition. So any paper that has a different color core from what is on the surface. So if it's white on the back these techniques will work fine too. And if you're not sure, what you can do is, as you can see here, just tear the paper along the edge and then you'll be able to see kind of what paper is on the inside. And if it's white, then you know it's a white core paper. Uh, but if it's silver, then it's gonna, and it's silver on the back side, then you would know that that's more of a solid core paper and you're not gonna get the same effect with some of the techniques I'm gonna share. The other thing you're gonna need is some craft stock. I would, you're probably gonna need about two sheets of it for all the die cutting and the background pieces that we're gonna create. The other papers are a piece of white cardstock and a piece of cream colored cardstock and then a piece of acetate. This is going to become the window of the shaker box and this chipboard is gonna be used to kind of create the uh, the shaker frame. So if you don't have craft stock, you could also get really thin chipboard, like a cereal box might work. Um, or you could just take, if you've got any kind of thicker white card stock, like one 10 pound card stock, that would work as well. And then you're, cause we're gonna be cutting multiple layers and, and adhering them together. So you just want something that you can do that with. For the sentiment, I'm gonna be using an ideology quote chip. You could use these or any sort of uh, stamp or die cut, whatever you prefer for the sentiment. It's really kind of up to you. And then as far as the mediums that we're gonna be using, I'm gonna be working with distress paint and salvage patina, cracked pistachio, scorched timber, and then you're gonna need some sort of sponge dauber to apply the paint with alcohol ink in mushroom, uh, spiced marmalade archival ink, then I've got scorched timber distress ink, and then antique linen distress oxide. And then you're gonna just need a couple of blending tools, one larger and then one a little bit smaller. And then you're also gonna need your distress sprayer. And then other basics, you're gonna need die cutting machine, a heat gun, and then any sort of adhesive that you prefer. I'm gonna be using a liquid adhesive. Um, this is the Precision Press by My Sweet Petunia, but you could use any liquid adhesive or tape runner that you prefer. When it 
comes to doing the die cutting for the actual pocket watch, you'll notice that there are two dies that create the pocket watch. And I think it was kind of brilliant how Tim designed this because it gives you the ability to create different things with the dies um, by having these two pieces separate. So this piece by itself will give you a solid uh, piece. You'll have a little bit of an uh, embossed edge with this part here. This, this part here does not cut. The cutting edge is out here. So that gives you an embossed edge, which because there's no opening, you can use this as the back of the watch. Then, so you can cut that piece, and then you can layer this piece on the inside and cut out the opening to create the front of the watch. The trick though that I learned is you wanna do all of the die cutting at the same time for the pieces that you need solid pieces for and then the pieces that you want to do that have an opening. And the reason I say that is uh, it can get a little bit tricky to try to line these dies back up each time. So what I like to do is kind of get them lined up, kind of get an, as even as I can space. But it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to use it all at the same time. And then use some sort of tape. This is just a, like a washi, tie, washi tape type tape and use that to just help hold this in place. So you can just tape those pieces together and then do all the cutting to create that open piece at the same time. So I'm gonna walk you through what those pieces would be. So you're gonna to wanna to cut it at least once from whatever color you want the front of your watch to be. So I'm gonna be cutting it once with this gold paper. And then I'm also going to be cutting it multiple times from my craft card stock. And this is gonna be what's gonna build up and create the kind of the frame, I like to call it, for the shaker. So to do the die cutting then, I'm just gonna place the paper in the die down onto my cutting plate and I'm just gonna run it through here. And then as you can see, it's cut out the center piece and then you have the frame of the watch. And now I'm gonna repeat that cutting with the craft stock probably about eight times to create some thickness for the shaker frame. Okay, so now I have finished cutting all of the frame pieces. So we've got the top gold layer and then the four uh, craft layers that are gonna give us that thickness that we need. So, you know, you might decide you don't want it as thick. It really just depends what you end up wanting to put into your shaker. So I'd say you want at least four layers if you're using this same paper. And I would also recommend keeping these scraps because you can use them to do some of the other die cutting uh, that we're gonna add to the card. So now we're going back to the die here and we can just remove that tape and sometimes after you cut a few times, the tape wants to stick a little bit. So you can just peel that off. And anytime you are using tape, if the tape is sticking onto the paper and you're having problems with it ripping, you might wanna try just some different kind of tape. There are so many different ones out there and some are more sticky than others. I just always recommend that you just go really slow when you're pulling any type of uh, tape off of your paper so that you minimize tearing it. I didn't have any problems this time, but it, sometimes it does happen. So now we no longer need this inside piece, so we're gonna set that to the side. And now I'm gonna use this piece to cut the back of the shaker from a piece of the metallic paper.
then you end up with this piece that is solid. So the vault watch gear set comes with a variety of fun little die cuts to help embellish the watch, including two different number sets, the little watch hands, a bunch of different little gears, and then two pieces to add to the top of the pocket watch to give it a little dimension. And now I'm gonna use this piece to cut the back of the shaker from a piece of the metallic paper. For my project, I'm gonna be die cutting with these numbers and the watch hands and the gears and the watch pieces. So the only pieces I'm not using actually are these numbers here. Um, and then what I, what I did is I took just some scrap pieces of, of all the various colors of the metallic craft stock, including that, you know, that little piece that we cut from the watch earlier. And I used that to die cut a bunch of the gears and the numbers. And I also then took that scrap craft stock and you might need a little bit more to do all of these, but I highly recommend backing these die cuts with some of the chipboard to make them a little bit heavier and give them a little more weight to create the sh inside shaker pieces. Uh, otherwise, they this paper is really relatively thin, so it um, they just don't want to float around in there very well. But when you add that extra layer on they will uh, just have better movement. And another thing I recommend is some of the pieces, and I only noticed this with the watch hands and the tiniest little gear, is you're going to want to cut it twice from the colored cardstock, and then you're gonna adhere this to here, adhere one to one side and then adhere the other one to the other side because these little pieces tend to flip over easily in the shaker, especially if you have a really deep shaker box frame. So just something I would recommend doing for some of these smaller pieces. So when it comes to adhering the layers together, you've got a couple options. You can use some sort of a liquid adhesive and, and glue them together. The nice thing about that is the liquid gives you a little bit of wiggle time to line things up and get them where you want them to be. Um, the other option is to uh, apply an adhesive sheet to the back side of the metallic craft stock before you do any die cutting. And then after you've die cut, then you can just peel this off and then stick it down onto the coordinating craft stock piece. So now I've got all my little gears and pieces adhered to the chipboard. So it just makes them a little bit thicker and heavier for the shaker components. And then as I mentioned on some of the pieces, I glued the metallic craft stock to both sides so that if it flips over, it's, it will still look good in the shaker. And then I also cut the extra little pieces to go on top of the pocket watch to just give it a little bit more dimension and then some numbers. So to add a little distress and interest to this, I'm going to take a sanding disc, which is just a piece of fine grit sandpaper, so you could also use that. And then I've attached that little disc. It's got a Velcro piece on it to just a ink blending handle. And then I'm just going to sand off some of the metallic on the gears and the front of the pocket watch. And you're not trying to scrape over the whole surface. You just wanna do like little sections of it. So I kind of tend to like tip this a little bit just to get little pieces here and there. And this is where having some sort of cardstock to work with that has a different color on the back side of it will be of benefit because 
of the step we're going to do after we finish with the sanding. And then to do the sanding, I'm working on a piece of scrap packaging just to protect my work surface from the sandpaper. This is also a step you could skip if you don't want them distressed. On any of these super delicate pieces, you just wanna make sure that you use your fingers to help stabilize it and then kind of rub away from your finger so that you're less likely to tear that piece. And then when you're all done with the sanding, you're just gonna wanna just kind of wipe this off a little bit because there will be a little bit of sanding dust on there. And then you are ready for the next step. So to give these a little more distress then, I'm gonna use this um, small blending brush and Scorch Timber Distress Ink. And I'm going to apply that ink over the die cuts. And you will see that the areas where you sanded through that top layer of the metallic will pick up that brown ink. So if you're going over this and you're like, I don't see anything, then you probably didn't sand enough. So you might wanna go back and uh, do a little more sanding. You don't need the whole piece to be that um, sanded off, but you want you know little pieces here and there and it just adds some really nice interest to the die cuts. And again, as you're doing this, just kind of use your fingers to help hold them still so that you don't accidentally tear the die cuts. You know, so like on this one, I'd, I'd like to maybe, maybe you want a little bit more in that middle. You know, then just grab your sand paper and come and do a little more sanding in there. Wipe that off. And then add some ink and you'll, you can kind of see how that then adds just a little bit more. It's subtle, but... The more, the more you sand and pull off, the more that will show. So here you can really hopefully see it on the watch where those edges have just that little bit of scorched timber now showing and it just just adds a bit of distress to it which i think is kind of cool 
Now for the back side of the pocket watch, I've used that solid piece to cut a piece of the light gold uh, metallic craft stock. And I'm going to be embossing it with the industrial 3D embossing folder from Tim Holtz. And before I do that, I'm going to spray this with some water. So I'm just gonna do that off camera so I don't get water all over my desk. But, you know, three or four spritzes of water just so you can, you know, it's not soaked, but it's, it's definitely damp. And then you're gonna place that inside the embossing folder. And then the sandwich you want for the embossing folder, you want to remove this adapter plate. So you're just going to have the standing, standard cutting platform and a, one of the cutting pads. And then they recommend kind of putting it in like at a little bit of an angle. And I also actually find that if I put the open end in first, it seems to go in a little bit easier, especially with some of these thicker 3D embossing folders. And then there we have it. So I'm not super worried about this top little piece. I was kind of thought that might happen because it's kind of a thinner um, thing there but this is what's going to be showing so you know you can just cut that off and then just one other th thing if you think about it you don't want to emboss the paper first and then die cut it because it will just flatten out most of this embossed pattern so you do you want to do the die cutting and then do the embossing and now for the background we're going to give it a bit of a faux metal a faux rusted a verdigris effect and to do that I'm going to be working with some distress paint and some archival ink and you're going to need some foam blending daubers and and a water bottle and the colors here for the paint I've got are salvage patina, cracked pistachios, scorched timber, and the archival ink I'm using is marmal spiced marmalade. And you're just gonna start off, you know, make sure you mix them real good. We're gonna just add a little drop of the paint to your craft mat, and then use the sponge dauber to pick up the paint, and then you're just gonna tap it onto the the paper just in a couple spots just to get a little bit of that onto the background and then next we're going to add some of the scorched timber we're going to do the same thing just kind of dab some spots here and there you're not necessarily trying to cover the entire background And then we're going to spritz that with some water just to kind of keep that paint from drying out completely. Next thing we're going to do is add a little bit of mushroom alcohol ink just here and there in a couple spots. And then we're going to dry that. Now we're going to go in and add just a little bit of that cracked pistachio. And I'm just going to use that same blending brush that I used with the salvage patina. And just tap that on here and there. I don't have a ton of paint. You saw that. Just one little drop and kind of rub it around and then just... Tap it on, 
and then you can dry that again. Or you could just let it air dry. The paint dries pretty quickly because you're not putting a lot on, but I'm just trying to speed it up a little bit for the video. And then we're gonna bring back that sanding disc and we're gonna just lightly sand over some of the areas here. You're not trying to take off all the paint and ink that you just put on, but just a little bit here and there. And then you can just kind of wipe wipe off some of that the damp towel there and then now you're going to take that archival ink and the spice marmalade let's get off that don't want to wipe your ink pad through the dust so now i'm just going to rub over this And it just kind of, you can see, just picks up kind of where it could catch on the paper. And then some of those areas where you sand it, it caught on there. And then because all of these products we're working with here between the paint and the archival ink and the alcohol ink, they're waterproof and permanent mediums. So they will stick to this metallic coated cardstock. Whereas if you were to try to do this with any sort of spray inks or regular distress inks or oxide inks, they won't stick to this paper because of that metallic coating that's on there. So you have to use some sort of permanent medium and that's where paints and uh, archival inks or an alcohol inks would work. So if you don't have archival ink, any sort of permanent waterproof ink would work. And so here's kind of a close-up look at the effect that we achieved there. So now it's time to begin assembling the shaker. You're going to need your front part of the watch, the craft stock pieces that we cut to create the shaker box and then the back and then you're also going to need some sort of transparency which I had mentioned earlier and I did attempt to die cut through this and with that die and I was having some trouble with it cutting it would either not cut all the way through or if I tried to use like a chrome precision plate it was actually cutting on the embossed part so I am going to assemble Part of this and then use this as a template to cut the circle out that I need to create the glass part for the watch. So we're just going to glue these air these four layers together and go from there. So now we have our shaker frame completed and now I'm going to take that acetate and adhere it to the front of the frame here. So it's going to go between the frame and the top layer. And you can see I'm not using a ton of adhesive. You don't need so much that it's gonna like squish out everywhere. That'll just make a big mess. I'm just gonna squish that down on there. I'm gonna put an acrylic block on top of that and then just give that some couple minutes to dry before I trim off the out excess. And then once the adhesive is dry, you can just take a pair of scissors and just trim around the outer edge here.
And I'm holding this actually upside down so that I kind of am protecting myself from accidentally cutting into the chipboard and just cutting, and so that I just cut the acetate. Now you may end up with some uh, kind of static. So what you could do is use like a lint-free cloth to kind of wipe some of that out if you like. And then while that was drying, I went ahead and added the top pieces to my watch. And now we're just gonna glue this onto the top. So this is on top of that acetate piece. And so we're gonna adhere that layer on top there to finish off the top of the shaker. And then again, this is kind of where having a liquid adhesive is helpful because it gives you just a few seconds to wiggle things around and get them, get them lined up. And you don't need a lot of adhesive, just, in, just enough to kind of get it stuck down there. If you do get any splooging out, just uh, wipe it off with either your finger or you know maybe even like a baby wipe or a damp towel, something like that. And now you are ready to fill your shaker. So I'm going to just trim off this little piece here because it's not really necessary. So to fill the shaker, I'm gonna place this with the front side down. And then I'm gonna take my various little die cuts. I'm gonna place them with the pretty side, that metallic side down into the piece and I would kind of maybe put some of their smaller pieces in towards the the front so that they can be seen and I don't and don't forget to that with some of those little pieces that you um, make sure you put metallic on both sides so if it does flip over in there you just see the metallic so when it comes to filling your shaker you don't necessarily need to use all of the pieces that you die cut out you kind of want to just make sure you have some space in there that things can still move around and shake when you before you put the cover on the back. Uh, so I'm going to leave out a few of these little pieces here to just help give that a little bit more space. Another option would be to just add more layers and make the shaker box thicker. So just kind of up to you. I'm just going to apply some adhesive to the back of this here and then attach the back of the shaker. And I'm just going to use this acrylic block to just kind of help hold that down and give it a few minutes to dry. Now that this is dry, we're going to move on to the background layers for the card. So to finish the card, uh, one more thing that I ended up adding was a piece of black craft stock and I embossed it using that same industrial embossing folder. And I, I'm gonna sand over this lightly just to reveal some of that craft core and add a little interest to the background. Again, not trying to remove all of the black, but just here and there, kind of hitting some of the highlights. And then getting around the edges. And then you just kind of wipe off that excess dust. And then we're gonna layer that onto these other card panels to finish off the card front. But before we assemble anything, I'm gonna take that white card stock and that cream colored card stock, and I'm gonna just ink the edges of it a little bit with some Scorch Timber Distress Ink. And just getting a little bit of ink onto my brush here and then rubbing it onto my craft mat, kind of in a circular motion. And then I'm just gonna bump that up against the edge here 
of this paper. I'm just kind of holding it at a slight, slight little bit of an angle. So that just kind of helps get a little bit smoother color application. And because this is going to get layered behind the black craft stock, I'm not going to worry about coloring or I'm not gonna worry about getting ink into the center of the paper because that's gonna be covered up. So I'm just gonna kinda of lay this on here and see if I feel like I need a little more ink or not. That looks, that looks pretty good. The other thing too, this Scorch Timber is really close in color to this and it just adds another little layer of dimension. You could certainly skip that layer and then just and just cut it and put it onto this one. So it's really kind of up to you. I just, I love lots of layers. So this gives me an excuse to do more layering. And a piece of white cardstock is less expensive than some black craft stock, which you could also, you know, put a layer of that behind there too, if you wanted. Um, I just, I just think this is a little um, less expensive way of doing that. And we'll do that same technique and just kind of lightly ink the edges of this cream colored cardstock, which is the Distress Heavy Stock uh, Mixed Media Paper. I'm just getting a little slight edge of color around there. And so then we'll layer these together and we'll finish off our card. I had always been a tape runner type person, but recently I switched to liquid adhesive because of this new applicator. This is called the Precision Press, and it just makes applying liquid adhesive so much easier, and it doesn't make my hand hurt. And And then the thing that's nice about liquid adhesive is you've got a little bit more wiggle room, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to adhering things because it doesn't dry right away. So you've got a little bit of time there to kind of wiggle it around and get it, get it where you want it. And I'm just gonna set that on there and let that dry. And as often the case when I'm putting a card together, I decided to add a little bit more interest to the background on the card. So I'm adding another layer. And for this, I'm using the woven 3D embossing folder from Tim Holtz, uh, but any sort of uh, linen or burlap type of embossing folder could work as well. And I'm just going to kind of tear this to create a little bit of an organic look to put behind here. So do that. I'm going to take my water brush, get the water going here, and then use that to kind of help me tear the paper. It kind of helps me get it going. And then I can kind of follow along there and then get that kind of raggedy edge look. And then do a little bit here the same way. And then I'm going to do kind of across the top here. Wanted to have kind of a bit more organic feel there with the torn edges. And try 
I'm going to decide if I don't even want it to be. Like maybe tear that this way or kind of go up and down that way. I'm not really sure. So let's just. we go. Yeah. And then if I wanted a little even more texture, I could do kind of layer it up like that. So, so to give this a little more interest, I'm going to add some ink with some antique linen oxide. And I've just kind of used my fingers to help kind of flatten out the paper if it had a little bit of a curve roundedness to it from the tearing and embossing. And then I'm just going to rub this over the surface of the paper here and it will just kind of highlight the texture a little bit. All right. So then so it just gives it a little bit more interest and kind of helps that uh, pattern stand out a little bit more. And now the card is ready to be assembled and completed. So here is a look at the finished card front and a little shaker that we created. And things might get a little stuck in there, but you can kind of give it a good shake, get it moving around again. And, you know, you could also, besides the die cuts, you know, if you wanted to put like little seed beads or sequins or anything like that in there, you could certainly do that instead of or in addition to the little die cuts that we put in. And then to finish the card completely, I've had some people asking me, you know, about the card fronts and then not putting them on a card base. I don't keep mine stored on card bases just because it takes up more space. I usually just add a card base when I'm ready to send the card. And for that, then I just take a piece of white card stock. I have, uh, this is like a Nina 110 pound. I kind of prefer a heavier card stock for my card because, you know, there's so much weight here that if you put this on a, like a thinner card stock, it's not going to hold up. It just is so heavy. It kind of gets flimsy. So I either cut it a piece of eight and a half by 11 paper in half lengthwise or um, shortwise and then score it to create a, a, the card. So this one is, you know, four and a quarter tall by eight and a half long and then I score it in half and then you can just, you know, adhere the card to that, in front of that. Or you can cut the card at four and a quarter and then 11 inches long and then score it in half. And then you can adhere it to the front of that. So just a couple of options there for how to completely finish the card once you get the card front made. Now, if you are looking for another shaker option for this die cut, the Sizzix Shaker Dome circles fit inside this die instead of using the acetate to create the glass for the pocket watch i use this shaker dome and it has an adhesive lining that you just peel off so you would put this underneath this top layer instead of the acetate and then it would stick to that um, base layer and then you would glue this on top of this and this just gives you a kind of a, 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 it's a much deeper, as you can see, it sticks out from the card probably about a half inch. So it definitely gives you a much uh, larger area to put in and have your elements shake around a little bit easier compared to the flat card here where they don't shake, they kind of want to get stuck on each other and shake and don't shake around as easy. But I wanted to be able to put the sentiment on top of the watch. So that's why I chose this one. 
But as you can see, I also made one like this and just added a stamped sentiment and an older uh, die here that is the gearhead die set. And then I used the same technique that I did on the background of this watch to create this big background here. And then the background of the watch is just a piece of the metallic craft stock sanded and inked like I did with the die cuts. So both of these are just some options on how you can use the Vault Watch Gears die set to create a shaker card. Thanks so much for joining me today and I hope you enjoyed learning how to create this shaker card using the new Tim Holt Vault Watch Gears die set. And I hope you learned some great tips and techniques that you can use in your next crafty project. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can join me on a more regular basis. Hit the like if you enjoyed this video. And if you want to join me on my other social media platforms, you can find the links to those in the description box below. Also, feel free to leave me a comment if you have any questions or if there's something you'd love to share with me and our community. I'll see you in the comments below and in the next video. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend.